Just to summarise what we've done today, the first thing we've done is we've gone over employment structure, we've looked at primary jobs, which is extracting raw materials from the land or sea, e.g. a farmer, secondary jobs, which is manufacturing or making something, e.g. a factory worker, tertiary jobs, which is providing a service, e.g. a cleaner or a fireman, and quaternary jobs, which is high-tech research and development. We've then seen that over time, uh, countries industrialise, so they move from a subsistence farming situation where everyone provides themselves so they can feed themselves, they then start to manufacture things on a small scale and a large scale, and that's industrialisation, doing things on a large scale. As countries get even richer though, they de-industrialise because they can't produce things cheaply as the poorer countries that are starting to industrialise. So a lot of the manufacturing is done in the poorer countries and we start to de-industrialise and we saw that with the end of shipbuilding in the UK. Primary jobs go down in the developed countries because of machinery. We still have a little bit of secondary because we are still having to manufacture some products, e.g. perishable goods. We've then looked at the Fisher-Clark model which brings in this um, pre-industrial, industrial and post-industrial. And what we want to sort of conclude with is saying that industrialization is what's one of the driving forces for globalization. We're looking at globalization, the spread of influence around the world, whether it's spread of manufacturing or culture or ideas. And industrialization does that. As factories start to go out of the host country and into other countries, we call it outsourcing, and we get our big branded factories going into the poorer countries, we're starting to make links with those countries. Things that we buy are now produced all over the world cheaper. It's having an impact on us, we get cheaper goods. It's having an impact on those other countries like Vietnam because they've now got more regular jobs working in a factory. However, there are still some problems because there is this argument is, is it actually benefiting them? Yes, maybe it is benefiting them, but we are paying them badly and not got very good working conditions. So it brings advantages and disadvantages for different countries. Overall, it's an advantage for the richer countries because we get stuff cheaper. It's also an advantage for the poorer countries because they get stability in their job, but there are the disadvantages in that the conditions aren't what we would expect in this country. The big question is, is that still better for them? Thank you.